Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to review a book called Taliesin. It's by Stephen Lawhead. I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk about the things that I did like, a few of the things that I didn't like, uh, but first I'm going to give a general overview of the book. A uh, quick warning, there will be a few spoilers, so if that bothers you, now's the time to check out. Taliesin is the first book of the Pendragon Cycle by Stephen Lawhead. Uh, basically, the book is about how the Arthurian legend, or King Arthur, came about. It's kind of a background story. It's historical fiction, so it's supposed to be based in reality more than mythology, but it's a little bit of both. The first two chapters introduce our two main characters, Karis and Taliesin. The chapters for the rest of the book alternate back and forth between the two characters as they follow their individual journeys. As they get older, they become even more different from each other. They assume different perspectives on life, uh, and they also take on different characteristics uh, because of those perspectives. Karis is a princess from Atlantis with some serious daddy issues. Uh, as the story progresses, she gets more involved in a sort of a uh, story of political intrigue where kings vie for power and eventually a war breaks out. During this war, a prophet shows up and prophesies about a dark time. Um, the kings summarily ignore him and he's cast out. Eventually, you guessed it, Atlantis is destroyed and sinks to the bottom of the sea just like the prophet uh, prophesied. On the other hand, Taliesin is an adopted child of a Welsh king, uh, which makes him a prince. He is also the pupil of a druid, and becomes a famous bard for reasons I'll leave to you to discover. Between the two main characters, Taliesin has a much more spiritual connection uh, to the life around him, whereas Karis is more involved with political and therefore earthly matters, um, which gives them an interesting dynamic when they finally meet. Because yes, eventually the two main characters do meet, but I'll let you read that part of the story for yourself because that's where things really kick off. If you've heard the word Pendragon before, you know that this series is about the Arthurian legend, or King Arthur. I've read a few Arthurian legends before. The most similar one to this is probably The Warlord Chronicles by Bernard Cornwell. He's also a historical fiction writer. There's also T.H. White's The Once and Future King and T.A. Barron's The Lost Years of Merlin. There's plenty of other books, but those are the ones I've read. In some ways, Stephen Lawhead wrote this book in a way that feels really familiar. It has a lot of the original mythical elements of King Arthur stories, for instance, uh, magic, mystery, uh, valorous, knight-like characters, and mystical Merlin-like characters. There's even a Lady of the Lake. Like Cornwell, he also employs research in his writing, and attempts to place the crux of the story in a time frame that makes sense. So in this case, it's 4th century AD, uh, Roman Britannia, right before the Roman Empire actually leaves. Uh, but Lawhead balances out the many familiar themes and character archetypes with one very straightforward point of originality. He mixes Arthurian legend with the myth of Atlantis, which is really unique. I've never actually seen that in a book before. Roughly half the story takes place on the island of Atlantis, so this gives the story enough uncommon material to keep the story interesting, and therefore the reader engaged. That being said, there are a few things I didn't really enjoy, and although it is obvious that Lawhead did his research and is able to describe the environment of his characters with great detail, uh, I do have a few issues with uh, some historical inconsistencies. For both of these, bear in mind the story takes place in 4th century AD. First of all, the fall of Atlantis has a large role in Taliesin, but the story of Atlantis's fall was actually told first in Plato's Republic almost 600 years before the setting of the book. Now, I realize that Atlantis is a myth, and uh, so my problem with it is not in regard to whether or not Atlantis actually existed, but rather with the large gap of time between when the myth traditionally took place and Lawhead's depiction of it. I'm probably the only one whose mind is bothered by this, but that's okay. Secondly, in the book, a character named Daphid eventually has a role in the story. After curiosity drove me to look up this minor character, it seems clear to me that Daphid is either based on or is supposed to be Saint David of Wales. This wouldn't be an issue except for that Saint David wasn't born for another 200 years after the setting of the book. Uh, however, beyond my uh, 
perhaps trivial, issues with the apparently purposeful lack of historic timing. I didn't really have any other problems with Lawhead's choices in regards to his style, the overall plot, or the speed of his storytelling, which wasn't rushed at all and it also didn't drag slowly onwards like so many books. In general, I really enjoyed the book. It was a fun read and the ending makes you want to read more, so I'll probably go back and uh, continue the series. But that's about it. Thanks so much for watching this first attempt. If you'd like to read the book for yourself, I'm sure you can find it in a local bookstore, or if you want, you can go to the Amazon link below. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve or what I should check out next, please leave a comment below. I'll check that out as well. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.